The definition of a flood study according to the New South Wales Floodplain Development Manual is a comprehensive technical investigation of flood behaviour that defines the variation over time of flood levels, extents and velocity for flood events of various severities up to and including the probable maximum flood. It is the technical foundation of the management study and plan to follow and it is essential that the objectives of the study are clear prior to starting so that the technical information derived from the flood study suits all end users. Most councils do not have the specialist resources to undergo a flood study in-house and hiring of specialist consultants is usually the more preferable approach. A technical brief gives potential consultants a detailed guideline of what the project involves. It needs to clearly set out the objectives of the project and the data to be provided. The Office of Environment and Heritage has standard templates available for these technical briefs and the drafts for each study should be checked and approved by the funding bodies before being issued to consultants to submit tenders. After receipt of the tenders, the applications should be assessed using a value assessment criteria which includes not only the price, however should include personal experience, track record, time frame to completion of project, amongst others. The Office of Environment and Heritage, or the grant funding body, should be involved in discussions in selecting the most appropriate tender before engaging the successful consultant. Once engaged, the consultant selected can commence the study. So, we have all the available data now and can begin using this information to investigate flood behaviour for our catchment. There are two main components of a flood study, the hydrologic and the hydraulic aspects. The hydrologic aspects include the estimation of flood discharges for floods of various severities including the probable maximum flood. The hydraulic aspects include the determination of water levels, velocities and the depths of flooding for those floods. The flood study may also investigate hydraulic and hazard categorisation which provides a better understanding of flood behaviour and hazard across the floodplain and between different events. Though commonly completed as part of the flood study, this may also be done later as part of the floodplain risk management study. Whether completed now or during the floodplain risk management study, the process is the same. Firstly, it is necessary to define the hydraulic categories as floodway, flood storage, or flood fringe. Floodway refers to an area that carries significant volumes of water during a flood and generally aligns with natural channels. Any blockage in these areas will result in a rise in flood levels. Flood storage is an area important for the temporary storage of flood water during the flood. The cumulative impact of any fill in these areas needs to be studied and determined. Flood fringe is any area beyond the floodway and flood storage areas affected by flood water. Secondly, it is necessary to define the hazard categories. These are determined using a combination of factors such as depth of water, rate of flow, warning time for evacuation, duration of the flood, flood free access and type of development. These categories are defined as high hazard and low hazard. High hazard areas are those where lives can be at risk, structural damage can occur and evacuation is difficult. Low hazard areas refer to those where evacuation is possible and buildings could be protected from structural damage. During the flood study, the consultant usually attends floodplain risk management committee meetings to give progress reports and discuss any issues that may arise on the way and continually maintain the link with the stakeholders. The importance of this link with stakeholders cannot be emphasised enough as the usefulness of a flood study can vary dramatically upon decisions made during this process. Once the draft flood study has been reviewed by Council and DEC W. It is advertised and placed on public exhibition so that the wider community is able to review the document and provide any feedback. A public meeting may also be organised if there is a lot of interest, misunderstanding or misinformation present within the community. 
All this feedback is then reviewed by the consultant. Any changes are made and further investigations completed before the finalised flood study is recommended by the Floodplain Risk Management Committee for adoption by Council.